Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Simply Explained English podcast. I'm Lisa, and I'm here with my friend Eric. How are you, Eric? I'm good, Lisa. Thanks for asking. And hello to all our listeners. We're happy to have you with us today. In this podcast, we explain some common English words and phrases in a simple and easy way. We also give you some examples of how to use them in real situations. Our goal is to help you improve your English and have fun at the same time. That's right, Lisa. And today, we have five words to explain to you. They are to be peaceful, to admit, evidence, to break down, and to be used to something. Are you ready, Lisa? I'm ready, Eric. Let's start with the first word to be peaceful. To be peaceful. To be peaceful. What does it mean, Eric? To be peaceful means to be calm and quiet without any problems or violence. For example, if you live in a peaceful country, it means that there is no war or conflict in your country. Or, if you have a peaceful mind, it means that you are not worried or stressed about anything. That's a good explanation, Eric. Can you give us an example of dialogue with this word? Sure, Lisa. Here it is. Hi, John. How was your vacation? It was amazing, Mary. I went to a small island in the Pacific Ocean. It was so peaceful there. The people were friendly, the weather was nice, and the scenery was beautiful. I felt so relaxed and happy. Wow, that sounds wonderful. I wish I could go there too. You should try it someday. You deserve a peaceful break from your busy life. Thank you, John. You're very kind. Maybe I will go there someday. I like how John used the word peaceful to describe the island. It makes me want to go there too. Me too, Lisa. It sounds like a perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. Yes, it does. Let's move on to the second word to admit. To admit means to say that something is true or that you did something bad. For example, if you admit that you broke a vase, it means that you say sorry and tell the truth. And also, admitting something doesn't always have to be serious. Sometimes you can admit that you love watching cartoons. Even if you're an adult, it's being honest about how you feel or what you think. I'm looking forward to our example dialogue. Sure, Lisa. Here is an example of dialogue between two friends, Anna and Ben. They are talking about a test that they took at school. Listen carefully and try to understand how they use the word to admit. Hi, Ben. How did you do on the test? Not very well, Anna. I failed. Oh no, what happened? Well, I have to admit, I didn't study enough. I was too busy playing video games and watching TV. It was my fault. Well, at least you admit your mistake, Ben. That's a good start. But you have to do better next time. Yes, I will, Anna. Ben used the word to admit to saying that he failed the test because he didn't study enough. And Ben was not afraid or ashamed to admit his mistake. Yes, Lisa. This shows his honesty. Let's move on to the third word, evidence. 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 Evidence means something that shows or proves that something else is true or exists. For example, if you see a footprint in the snow, it is evidence that someone walked there. Or if you have a receipt from a store, it is evidence that you bought something there. That's a good explanation, Lisa. Thank you. Let me ask you a question, Eric. What is it, Lisa? Do you believe in aliens? Aliens? You mean like creatures from outer space? Yes, exactly. Well, I don't know, Lisa. I've never seen one. Have you? No, I haven't. But I've read some stories and watched some videos that say that aliens are real and they have some evidence. Yeah, I know. Do you believe those stories and videos? Well, some of them seem very realistic. They have evidence to support their opinion. What kind of evidence? Well, for example, some people say that they have seen UFOs, which 
are unidentified flying objects. They have photos and videos as evidence. Hmm, I see. But how do you know that those photos and videos are not fake or edited? Maybe they are just tricks or jokes. Well, I don't know for sure. But some of the evidence look very real and clear. There is more. Some people say that aliens have spoken to them or sent them messages. Hmm, I see. Maybe they are just coincidences, or they have different explanations. Well, I don't know, maybe. But as I said, they are strong evidence, in my opinion. Well, I think I need more direct evidence, like seeing an alien myself or touching an alien spacecraft. Until then, I will remain skeptical and open-minded. I understand, Eric, and I respect your opinion. But I believe we will see more evidence one day. Maybe you're right, Lisa. Maybe one day we will. But until then, let's agree to disagree, okay? Okay, Eric. Let's keep learning more English. What is the next word? The next word is to break up. To break up. To break up. What does to break up mean, Eric? To break up means to end a relationship or stop marriage with someone. For example, if you break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, it means that you stop dating them. Or if you break up with your wife or husband, it means that you stop your marriage. Let's have a look at the example dialogue. Hi, Jill. I need to talk to you about something. Hi, Jack. Is everything okay? Jill, I'm sorry, but I think we should break up. What? Break up? Why? What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong, Jill. It's not you. It's me. I think it's better for both of us to break up and move on with our lives. I don't believe this, Jack. You can't just break up with me over the phone. You owe me an explanation. You owe me a face-to-face -face conversation. Jill, please, don't make this harder. How did you find the dialogue, Lisa? Well, it was a useful example, but sad and depressing as well. And I don't like the word to break up. It is a sad word to use. Yes, true, but on the other hand, it depends on the situation. Sometimes breaking up might be a better solution for couples. Yeah, I know, Eric. Life changes. When we say yes to change, good things can happen. Let's remind our viewers. After the dark, there is always light. I like it. After the dark, there is always light. This is a nice saying. Okay, let's move on to the last word. To be used to something. To be used to something. To be used to something. What does it mean, Lisa? To be used to something means to be familiar or comfortable with something, especially after doing it many times. For example, if you live in a cold country, you are used to the cold weather. Or if you do exercise every day, you are used to doing exercise. It sounds like to be used to something is a phrase that shows habit. Absolutely. Or you don't mind or complain about something that you always do. But it can also be a bad thing as well because you can be used to something bad as well. Thank you for explaining that. Can you give us an example dialogue that uses the phrase to be used to something? Sure, Eric. Here is an example of dialogue between two travelers, Sam and Sarah. They are in a new country and they are trying to get used to the local culture. Listen carefully and try to understand how they use the phrase to be used to something. Wow, this place is amazing. Look at all the colors, the people, and the food. I love it here. Me too, Sarah. But I have to admit, some things are very different from what we are used to, don't you think? Yes, Sam, I agree. Some things are very different and are very hard to get used to, like the traffic and the noise. Yeah, I know what you mean, Sarah. The traffic is crazy here. I'm not used to traffic here. It makes me nervous. Me too, Sam. And the noise is so loud here. I'm not used to sleeping with so much noise. It makes me tired. But you know what, Sarah? Even though some things are hard to get used to, I think we can learn to enjoy them. That's true, Sam. After a while, we will get used to them. And maybe after a while, we will miss them when we go back home. Maybe, Sarah. Maybe. How did Sam and Sarah use the phrase to be used to something in the dialogue, Eric? 
well, Sam said that some things were very different from what they were used to. He said that he was not one used to traffic and sleeping. And Sarah said that some things were very hard to get used to, and they both said that they could learn to enjoy them. I hope our viewers are used to watching our channel. Watching our channel will be their habit. I hope so, Lisa. Okay, let's end the podcast here. Thank you for listening to The Simply Explained English, the podcast where we help you learn English in a simple and fun way. I'm Lisa, and I'm here with my friend Eric. We hope you enjoyed our podcast and learned something new today. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe and share our podcast with your friends. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.